everybody. Welcome to the Hallmarkies podcast. And we are here to talk about a new series from Hallmark. It's been a long time since they had a new series. So this is really fun called The Way Home. And I am film critic Rachel Wagner and Me Too is here. Hi, thanks for having me. And Michelle is here. Hey, everyone. And we're we're really excited about this new show. And we were talking off air. We don't have a name for this podcast, this series. Uh, we're talking about the series yet. So if y'all listening and you have a great name suggestion uh, for this uh, podcast covering this series, uh, let us know. We want to hear your ideas. Uh, but uh, but yeah, it's pretty exciting. Wouldn't you agree, Michelle? It's been a while since we've gotten a new series from Hallmark. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um and there's just several uh, reasons that I'm excited for this. The cast, of course, like I'm a big fan of the majority of the cast. Um, you and I have talked about Heartland for, you know, years at this point. Yes. <laughs> um, so having a, a new show from those creators is really interesting. You know, creators that have done the same show for, you know, well over a decade and a half. So them taking on something new and something sort of similar, but also very different. To Heartland was was interesting, but also I think this is the first show under Wanya. Is that is that correct? This is her first. Yeah, I mean it's it's the first new show that they have done, unless you count like they had a reality show and a few things, but it's the first narrative that they narrative show that they've greenlit since I I don't think there's been one since Good Witch. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah, and considering like the, the changes that One Year Lucas has made over the past couple of years and the movies, I've just been really excited to see that in the shows as well. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm hoping that The Way Home is just sort of the beginning of that. Um, we already see in the cast, like it's a lot more diverse than, you know, Heartland was at the beginning and, and other, you know, shows. It's it's definitely piqued my interest right from the, the, the jump. Yeah, because I mean, Hallmark hasn't done that many shows. There's Science Seal Delivered. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's one called The Heart. There's Cedar Cove and uh, Good Witch and Chesapeake Shores. I guess maybe Chesapeake Shores was before, I mean, it was after Good Witch. So that's the last one that they greenlit, but that was a long time ago. Uh, mm-hmm. So yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's really, it's very exciting. I mean, especially as a podcast, we got more to cover. <laughs> so <sounds good. laughs> But uh, what about you, Miti? Were you uh, intrigued by the premise? What um, kind of excited you about this show? Yeah, I think you were the person who sent it to me initially. And I was so excited to see that there was a new show coming on Hallmark and that it was so different. It just was such a cool concept. And anytime I see Andy McDowell is going to be in something, I'm probably going to be tuned in front row ready to go so that this was very intriguing to me Mm -hmm. yeah yeah me too and it i just to see anything with kind of time travel it's something uh different i think was exciting uh something that uh i wouldn't have expected from hallmark We'd like to take a second from this episode of the podcast to celebrate our sponsor of this episode and that is the hallmarkies patreon Do you love Hallmarkies podcast? Do you want an inside scoop into what happens on the podcast? Do you want early access to episodes and loads of cool perks? Now is the time to become a patron of Hallmarkies podcast. By becoming a patron, you get to access our patron Facebook group. You can request episodes or even be a guest on the podcast. And most importantly, any patron can join our monthly movie watch-alongs with stars like Paul Campbell, Natalie Hall, and more. It's as low as $2 a month to join in and become a special part of the Hallmarkies family. Please consider, and we will love you forever. Go to patreon.com slash hallmarkies. That's patreon.com slash hallmarkies. So we got to watch the, the pilot. It's just, I think, called the it's called mothers and daughters is the name of the pilot with this scene from 1814 with this girl she jumps into the magic lake and uh, we we're kind of saying that this is like the the tardis lake (laughs) (laughs) if y'all watch doctor who 
Um, but, uh, but, uh, yeah, that's the kind of basic premise is you have this girl, Alice, um, who is a bit of a challenging teenager, which if you'll follow the podcast, you know, is not my favorite archetype, the sullen, grumpy teenager, but, uh, but we have her played by Sadie LaFlemme Snow, who we got to interview, uh, this weekend and, uh, and she starts out the uh, the movie. I mean, she starts out the show by setting off the fire alarm, and because she gets stage fright. And uh, what did you think, Michelle, about this kind of start? You get the introduction with the eighteen fourteen, and then the fire alarm. Um, I mean, that sort of um, opening is is something that you see in sort of fantasy tv all the time oh really? I, mean, I literally yeah i literally just watched um the pilot for the mayfield witches which is an Anne rice show um mm-hmm. just started um and it literally opens the same way they go back in history and you know flash forward and especially if it's something you know that goes through generations they tend to sort of go way back and they had things like that and charmed and, and all of these other types of shows as well um so it was quite interesting and not again it is sort of really hard to get my head around the fact that this is on hallmark um because it's just not something we tend to see mm-hmm. um we see a little bit of it um in christmas when they, they sort of lean into the you know their time travel movies and um, yeah like next stop christmas or yeah rip and time like and things like that yeah yeah oh yeah um, rip and time <laughs> <laughs> um but it's not something that we tend to see on on hallmark you know, throughout the year um mm-hmm. but yeah I, I thought it was a really good good way of opening it um and I really do wonder if they have set up set up a mythology um you know do they have sort of a a, a sort of timeline mapped out yeah uh, I like would how, love to how, ask Heather that uh, like how intensive is their sort of time travel um, mm-hmm. time travel is such a difficult thing to, to do in, in tv and movies some tv shows do it really well like um i think probably the best one was uh in, in most recent years was uh 12 monkeys um a tv show oh. like the time travel in that show is solid and it's one of those ones where you think about it so hard it literally hurts your brain <laughs> um whereas this show it feels like they're going to be a little bit more lighter with it and sort of explain away things and just ex- hope that the audience sort of goes with it yeah Um, i'll definitely have some thoughts about that as far as critiques of the pilot but uh overall what did you think me too of the pilot and what do you think of sadie as alice i actually thought that alice was really she was such a sympathetic character I didn't see her as a one note, just exclusively rebellious teen. Mm -hmm. I -hmm. thought that Sadie played her with such heart and they did a really great job of balancing like her rebellion with clear discontent within the home. And she's just trying to find something to cling to. And her parents are maybe not doing a great job in her mind of providing that. So I thought that was balanced really well. Because I agree, Rachel, especially with young women, I hate when they're just like, this young woman can't get under control. And that's the end of the story. And I don't think that's what happened here. Um, And then overall with the story, I love, love, you can ask BJ, (laughs) my my very good friend I co-host the pilot podcast with, anything to do with relationships between women is my single favorite genre of media. Mm -hmm. So the idea of like a complicated relationship between mother and daughter, and then with her mom and her grandma, the like very difficult relationship there that we can get into in this review. Mm -hmm. It just, I am uh, maybe a fraction of people who just absolutely loves movies like Georgia rule, divine secrets of the Yaya sisterhood. Like any movie where people are like, no, you need to know what your mom went through in her youth. And that is how you help build like sympathy for this person. Even like turning red did that to some extent. It's just my favorite thing. 
Yeah, I I agree. I I think that the casting is really strong. I think Sadie is is really good. We're somebody that we're like rooting for and isn't just sort of the that archetype that I hate, the sullen, uh, miserable teenager. If anybody's seen The Whale, I absolutely hated Sadie Sink's character in that movie. It was just the worst. <laughs> but um uh, but uh yeah she she's obviously struggling but in her defense she has a lot to struggle with i mean her parents are separating uh her mom moves her at the beginning like way far away uh from her dad and from everybody that she knows uh so that would be hard that would be really hard and uh Mm -hmm. the reason why cat decides to move uh, is she gets this letter from her mom. And uh, so she decides to move back to uh, her mom. And uh, and they're, so they go to Port Haven, it's called, uh, in Canada. And, uh, and when she gets there, they, Andy McDowell's character, Dell, she says, what letter? So that's already like bringing in some injury. Who wrote this letter? It was like it was in your handwriting, you know, and <laughs> and who at which time? Yeah, Ooh. yeah, yeah. And I do think that they did a really good job of of making particularly Andy McDowell look different ages. Mm-hmm. She, they, they. I mean, it's just a lot of it is the hair color, but but still, I don't know. I thought she, they they really did a good job with that. Agree. Applying it. Uh, and so then we have when she moves, uh, that, you know, they say once a singer, always a singer. And you find out that, that Dell's husband and son passed away. So that's something that we start to learn about because when she goes back in time, they're there. Mm -hmm. Mm Mm-hmm. And uh, that obviously was major trauma to the family. Uh, but uh, but what did you think, Me Too, of Kyler playing Kat uh, yeah, in both sort of time periods? What, what did you think of her? I loved Kat across time periods. Kat, mm-hmm. in the present day, I thought she had one of the most juicy melodramatic lines of the show. She said something to the effect of, to her mom, I'm floundering because I have nothing left to cling to. And I was like, oh, that's such a good, like dramatic line to yell. <laughs> um, so I loved her in present day, especially navigating her relationship with her ex, her ex moving on, her kind of being shouldered with the task of breaking the news to Alice that her ex-husband, that Alice's dad is moving on. He sort of was like, I have to go to work, you deal. And then young cat was fantastic. I loved seeing just as a totally unrelated to the substance of the show. I loved seeing those like nineties clothes and it was just so (laughs) lovely to see like how happy their family was. And it was very clarifying how, um, how, far the rift must be between Kat and Dell for them to have come from an almost like classic Norman Rockwell just picture perfect family situation this is a family that sang together after dinner it's something I've never seen except in movies and shows <laughs> but I know that that means everybody was really happy <laughs> yeah yeah and they have Alex Hook playing teen Cat, and I think that that was very good very good casting mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, What do you think, uh, Michelle, of Kyler in this pilot? Yeah, I agree. Like, there's definitely, like, a through line from young cat to to old cat. Like, I'd be really curious to know if they communicated a lot before filming the pilot, just to work on certain sort of mannerisms or, you know, just certain, like, things. Uh, Because I know in Supergirl, like, her character also had um, a younger version of herself and they, she spoke a lot about the fact that they worked together a lot. So I wonder if it was the same here. Um, but yeah, just in terms of, of the 
of Cat on her own, like, I can already see the sort of beginnings of such a complex, deep character. Mm-hmm. Um, and she, you know, like me too said, she was sort of given the really hard job of having to deliver the bad news, having to be the bad guy when she really isn't. Um, we see that a lot in, in movies and TV, but I thought that Kyler handled it really well. Um, and it says a lot about her character, just little moments of, you know, her refusing um, her ex-husband, uh, soon to be ex-husband Brady's financial support anymore, that she's kind of wanting to stand on her own again. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that says a lot about who she is. Um, and yeah, I'm just... I'm just really excited to dig into all of the sort of family drama and, you know, there's nothing I love more than, you know, really well written family drama where, you know, the bickering and the, all of that sort of dialogue, um, just, mm-hmm. it, you know, some of it is done really clunky in a lot of shows, but you will get some that just do it really well, like brothers and sisters or parenthood. And I can really see this coming from, you know, Heather Conkey, that she has the chops to really deliver as a really great family drama. And the fact that it's between these three women, well, <laughs> three women in different time periods, um, mm. it's just, I'm just really excited to see where it goes. Um, and I know just from, other sort of interviews that Kyler's given that there's just a lot more to to cat there in terms of her sort of mental health and, and things like that that we're really going to dig into and I think we're going to see some amazing acting from her yeah it, it- hello I'm Hannah and I'm Katie and we have a podcast called one kiss means forever Do you love made-for-TV rom-coms? Are you obsessed with Hallmark and all the Hallmark-inspired copycats that have come out on other platforms like Netflix? And while being obsessed, do you know that these are not what one might call quality films? (laughs) If so, come listen to our podcast. Each episode, we discuss one movie that did not have a theatrical release and always ends in a happily ever after. And how do we know it will end in a happily ever after? Because one kiss means forever, of course. So join us as we deep dive into each movie for about 45 minutes. Episodes drop every other Thursday, except during the very elongated Hallmark Christmas season when we join the Christmas craze and go weekly for about two and a half months. Bye! Bye. Me too. Have you <laughs> ever Have you ever seen Heartland? Did no. Did you cover that on your show? Mm-mm. Uh, because the creators uh, of this show or are the creators, the showrunners of uh, Heartland. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's why we, we kept referring to it. Uh, Heather Conkey in, in particular, and then her daughter, uh, I think it's Alexandra. Yeah. Clark, Alexandra Clark. Daughter. Yeah. And, uh, and so the it, Michelle and I have just spent the last two and a half years covering Heartland because it's such a that's now going into season 16 <laughs> yeah it's never oh. ending <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> but we have interviewed heather a, in, a couple of years ago we interviewed her this was before i'd watched even an episode of heartland uh but heartland is also a show that's very uh female based mm-hmm. i mean it's it's all around uh amber's character amy and her sister and uh, of course then you have the the rest of the family too but but anyway uh it's also you know very animal based uh, uh, uh amy's a horse whisperer kind of a thing uh so if people haven't listened to that interview with heather i'll put the uh, link in the description and then we did talk to sadie uh as well this last weekend i mean the only thing that and I don't know if I'm like completely sold on yet is that I, I did feel like when she goes back in time, mm-hmm. she goes in, into the lake. I felt like mm-hmm. her response was very muted. Like, I mean, <laughs> if you went, if you all of a sudden you were back in time 
and you you were there with your mother as a teenager, I mean, you would be like shocked. You would have some kind of like, what, what is this? What's happening? Like she didn't have anything like that. And I I, I felt like they should have had something. She know. adjusted immediately. <laughs> didn't she didn't miss a single she beat she really didn't like, I mean oh what was your name oh okay yeah. Kat. cool 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 yeah I think we'll be I think we'll make great friends yeah <laughs> she's seen enough tv and movies she knows what's going on <laughs> you know, she's like I just got to go back to that lake don't even worry about it I have my return <laughs> ticket stamped yeah I mean it's I that's the only thing that like I understand that they would kind of want to get that out of the way quickly and it's so that they could move on with the story but i just felt like they didn't have anything yeah True. i really feel like all of this is going to come in with um with elliot i really feel like that's going to be a major part of the of the show of him sort of being the the sort of explainer of the, of the time travel and how it works and mm-hmm. and all of that um, because his character is very mysterious at this point. Um, but yeah, yeah, I feel like he's going to be a little bit of the, the audience surrogate or sort of spoon feeding us the information. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. What do you think about that, Me too. Do you agree? I That raises such a good point, Michelle. Elliot in, very pointedly told, very pointedly told Alice, I will help you any time any Mm -hmm. place and at first I was like if an adult man said that to me on my first day of school (laughs) there would be a very different reaction for me and my family (laughs) next steps from there you've been Uh, pulling a fire alarm again (laughs) yeah I I pulled another fire alarm and disappeared for entirely different reasons but obviously we know Elliot has some kind of good intention because it's clear there's a history between him and Kat But when he, um, I don't want to get too spoiler heavy so people can enjoy the show, but he clearly knows more than everyone else about the time travel. No, it's it's okay. Cause this is a recap. So, so, uh, yeah, no, you don't have to worry about that. Cool. So it makes me curious about what the rules of time travel are. Meaning is this Alice's first time meeting Elliot in this timeline is has Elliot always known Alice across That's time? The other lines? Thing. Like, yeah, how long has it been happening? How long has he been walking her through it? My brain started to like fold in on itself. Well, that's the other thing that doesn't that. really make sense. And I actually asked Sadie about this is that why wouldn't anybody in her family recognize her, you know, and be yeah. like, oh, you look a lot like that teenage girl that we saw years ago. <laughs> that we rescued from our own lake yeah that, that would be a story in my home I mean yeah. I know I may not come from the most interesting <laughs> nuclear family but it we it would come up years later It'd be like remember that time you rescued that child out of yeah. that lake and Sadie said oh well they just didn't think of it because I guess that I mean it, it, it is a good point that like the, your first thought isn't going to be like oh your time travel or true uh, <laughs> that you just think oh you look like that girl that we we knew you just happened to look like her is probably what you think but yeah they 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 are kind of doctor whoing it in the sense that like doctor who never really deals with time uh the time travel in the sense that like all the different ripple effects there's a couple episodes but for the most part they just don't they 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 go through time and make all these changes and it doesn't matter that's uh, true. And so the that's kind of it seems like what they're doing here. So then when Elliot was standing at the lake at the end of the episode to be like, don't worry, Kat, she's good. Because he knows, I guess, that Alice is about to emerge from that lake. Does that mean this is the first time he's helping her? Or has he known Alice for all of her time travel, meaning like teenage Elliot early 20s Elliot Elliot today has all interacted with some iteration of Alice yeah because when adult cat is worried about where Alice is she asks him how do you know she'll come home Mm -hmm. and he says I just do 
And he was waiting right there at the water. Mm -hmm. So he knows. Does that mean he has interacted with her several times or he just knows really well from that first time that she's gone back when he was a teenager and Kat was a teenager? Well, it makes you wonder also, uh, are, is Alice going to be the only time traveler Mm -hmm. or is, is Kat going to end up time traveling? Who else is jumping in this lake? (laughs) (laughs) What yeah, do you think, like, Michelle? what are the like? What are the limits of it as well? Can she stay there like indefinitely? Yeah, that's that's also a question. Yeah, <laughs> we've got a lot of questions. <laughs> yeah, I wonder if it would have been a better thing of them doing like a, a two episode sort of premiere, just so there's some sort of immediate answers to like. Mm. <laughs> because yeah, they, they do sort of leave us with a bunch of questions. Um. Yeah, you know, I think I'm just going to go with it. I'm going to just approach it the same way that I approached Doctor Who and just sort of go with it. Mm-hmm. Unless it gets really silly, then I will absolutely call it out. But I think for the most part, and it would be really interesting to hear from Heather in terms of their approach to the time travel part of it. But it feels like it is what you said, Rachel, that they're, they are just sort of doing the the sort of Doctor Who thing and not really picking up on the ripple effect of changing one tiny little thing Mm -hmm. because if they're going to be saving people from dying and things like that like that's some pretty big um, moral things that the show will be dealing with Mm -hmm. well so we also know that we also know that uh, Dell in the modern time has basically erased all of the memories of Colton and Jacob. Uh, that's the dad and the dad and the um, son. The photos are gone. Um, and Kat says, I'm floundering because I have nothing left to cling to. You've erased all of it. So that's very going to be tense when we find out mm-hmm. what happened there's some kind of accident or something yeah and do we think that Dale is aware of the time travel it doesn't seem like it i don't know what do you think me too i can't I like tell been... i'm sorry please go ahead michelle no no it's okay I, I just feel like it's going to be like a cliffhanger or something that's that's sort of going to be threaded throughout the season of hints here and there that she may know Mm -hmm. i think so too because she ran right up to elliot as soon as she thought the letter thing was weird Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. she was like what did you do so i don't know if she thinks about it in a time travel sense but at the very least she knows that elliot holds more cards than he's letting on yeah yeah i think it's just something the way andy's playing it um, there's definitely something more going on, whether it's her being aware of the time travel or just being aware that something strange um, occurs in this area. Maybe she knows the history. I have no idea, yeah. but I think <laughs> that I think that that will be a reveal. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, and it's interesting because you have this sort of relationship between Teen Elliot and Alice starting uh but then you also have sort of this relationship also between adult elliot and cat <laughs> uh to see what's gonna all happen with that i think it's gonna be interesting oh my god i didn't even think of that that's so messy <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I was excited that they have Evan Williams as adult Elliot because he was in uh, Midnight at the Magnolia. Oh, that was uh, so good. Which was really good. Uh, which with uh, Natalie Hall, who's also in this show. Uh, and I thought that uh, she might be the, the new girlfriend for the dad. Mm-hmm. But it looks <clears throat> like a different name. There's nobody in the cast list for Rachel. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's also Caitlin Doubleday on the cast list as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah, I, so I think we'll be seeing a lot of Hallmark people. 
Uh huh. Yeah. Um, and Colton, the dad, played by Jefferson Brown, who had a memorable stint on on Good Witch, playing Ben, who I loved so much. He was so good. I was so sad when he was gone. <laughs> um, but uh but yeah then um you have of course andy mcdowell we haven't really talked about her too much but uh again i think she does a really good job playing both ages both parts i mean looking the role but then also playing it and i i i buy that these three women are are this family I think they did a good job of casting. We'd like to take a second and thank our sponsor for this episode of the podcast. It's the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Are you looking for that perfect gift for the postable, hardy, or Hallmarky in your life? What about getting that t-shirt or hoodie that will help you stand out at your next holiday party? Now is the time to check out the Hallmarkies Merch Store. Full of festive designs by artists like Jessica Miller, Carrie from Hallmark Comics, and more. You can even have more than just shirts, but totes, cell phone cases, notebooks, mugs, and more. And it isn't just Hallmark. We have designs for Anna Green Gables, Man from Snowy River, The Nanny, and more. Every purchase at the merch store goes to help support the podcast and allows us to make the great content you know and love. There are frequent sales, so go to tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies or see the link in the description. That's tpublic.com slash stores slash Hallmarkies. For sure. Mm-hmm. completely I feel like she always chooses such interesting parts whenever she sort of pops into homework mm-hmm. so yeah. yeah there must have been something about this show that really so because I imagine if they, they're taking on a role like this then you know they are aware that it could go for like seven years or something like that yeah um it could be a long long job um but yeah, she always chooses really interesting parts, and I do love the differences between um, the sort of younger Del. Um, you know, you can sort of see how the grief of her, you know, loss of her husband, the loss of her child, you can see that in the older Del. Um, she makes really interesting choices there. So yeah, I'm really, I'm mm-hmm. really digging the way she's sort yeah. of approached it. I would love to know from Heather. Uh, when this, how early Hallmark was involved in this, mm-hmm. you know, if they, they created this idea and they pitched it to Hallmark or they just pitched it to a different, you know, uh, studio that then, then, that then pitched it you know, like they do with pilots all the time to Hallmark. Uh, I would be really curious to know how soon they were involved. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because you would think with them working with, like CBC for for Heartland, mm-hmm. that they would maybe go there first. But right. Yeah. yeah, that would be interesting to know. Uh, so then we have uh, Elliot is in in mo- in modern time. He is Alice's science teacher, mm-hmm. and uh, and so you can see that she's struggling. And uh, then she has this um, bracelet uh, that uh, that she had gotten from her mom. Uh, and she throws the bracelet into the pond and then jumps in after it, regretting it. And that's when we get our first time travel. And uh, she's saved by teen cats. So they they meet. And again, I think that you would be a little bit more excited than she <laughs> is. About, I know she's a teenager, but come on. <laughs> I'd be pretty excited if uh, I went back in time and met my teen mom <laughs> and my mom as a teen. <laughs> and, uh, and then I... Uh, and, and then there's this, so Alice says, you know, everything will be fine. And then there's the whole Jacob wasn't fine. So like, she's kind of shocked to see her grandpa and to see her uncle as you would be. Um, mm-hmm. And then uh, the grandpa plays music and, and her guitar, she finds out that she has her grandfather's guitar. 
Um, and, uh, and then, um, later on, again, they like have dinner. Everything's pretty normal in past world. They like have dinner, they talk, everything's sweet. And, uh, and so, yeah, it was, it was interesting how sort of she just sort of naturally fits into the family, even in the past. They had really yeah. great chemistry. Yeah. She yeah. and her past family. Uh, I, I really buy chemistry. I really buy the chemistry of present day Kat, Dell, and Alice. And it's like a really juicy tension. And it's just a really good chemistry of that. I, I buy them mm-hmm. as like a tense mother-daughter relationship twice over. But I also... I think more interestingly to your point, Rachel bought the chemistry of when she bought of when she went back in time because she blended into that family immediately. And just now when you're describing it in my mind, it's like, oh, that is odd that they like pulled her out of a lake and then brought her inside and had dinner with her. And there was not a moment of discomfort. There wasn't a moment of like, yeah. uh, what were you sort of doing there on our property? <laughs> like. <laughs> How did you end up washed up in this lake there? I am like now, as you're describing it, I'm just now sort of thinking critically about it. And that is perhaps a testament to how well she blended in. Cause I was like, wow, they're just vibing. Like what a great chemistry this family has. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It's going to be interesting to see how aware everyone involved old and new are of the TARDIS lake you know, Mm -hmm. of the, of the magic lake, because, because that's the only thing that would really make sense is this, if this has happened before and they know, or they're just like super friendly, I guess. (laughs) Come (laughs) in, (laughs) have have dinner. (laughs) Uh, But, uh, but young Jacob was really cute and he, they have a like Polaroid camera thing and they uh, take the picture and and then uh cat when she's adult cat when she's looking through all the stuff she finds the picture with uh from the past with her teen her and and alice so that's kind of your cliffhanger of like oh she knows you know now yeah and i wonder because it's a little bit distorted you can't quite make it out mm-hmm. if that's sort of going to be a theme of the show of like the the timeline sort of protecting itself Mm -hmm. well and i also wonder because it starts out in 1814 so are we gonna go is it just going to be this one time period are we going to go back to other time periods and i wonder if it's going to be a balance of you know 50 percent of this show is going to be present day and then another the, the other 50 is going to be 1999 is it going to be an equal balance Mm hmm. Yeah. Was that the year? I missed that. That 1999. To, yeah. 1999. That makes me feel old. <laughs> I was in. <laughs> I was in college. <laughs> 1999. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's gonna be interesting to see because why start it in 1814 with this girl running into the magic lake if you're not going to somehow bring that in another time yeah, period. Bit- it would be fun if every sort of episode started with a sort of, you know, a little bit of a history lesson of, you know, all the way up until present day, we learn a little bit more of, of this sort of time traveling lake. You know, every episode starts with a different year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and then it ends with Alice talking to teen Elliot and then Kat talking to adult Elliot. And, uh, and then we get the, how do you know she'll come home? I just do. So there we go. That's our cliffhanger. <laughs> <laughs> so as far as pilots go, uh, I forget exactly your rating system. Uh, me too, <laughs> but I think it's like folding laundry you'll be watching um not yes. watching yeah what would you- watch would watch again seriously like we'd marathon it mm-hmm. would watch again casually just sort of you're not 
you want to keep tuning in, but you're not necessarily at the edge of your seat to finish the story. And then, like you said, Rachel would watch while folding laundry, cooking, you know, those shows you put on when you do errands and then would not watch again. Yeah. So what would be your verdict? I mean, I don't know if you're going to review this on your show, but so it could be a spoiler for your your (laughs) episode. I don't, I don't know if we'll review this one on our show because I don't think I can get BJ to watch Hallmark, but I would say I'm, I'm probably in the would watch again, seriously camp in the sense that every week when this comes on, I will be sat for it. Mm, Very good. Well, that's good. That's high praise then. Yeah. I really like it. Mm -hmm. Uh, What do you think, Michelle? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I would definitely seriously watch this again. Uh, so I'm in the same uh, same mm-hmm. camp. Um, yeah, this is completely my jam. It's a family drama. It's got sort of a, a mystical element where it's not sort of hinted at, which tends to be the, the way on Hallmark. It's fully um, sort of going for it. Um, mm-hmm. In a way we haven't seen before, the cast is amazing. Um, yeah, I, I'm definitely going to be watching the entire season. Yeah. I mean, I'm not that much of a TV person, so I probably wouldn't watch it if it wasn't on Hallmark, but I am excited to watch it. And I think it's, it's something different and, and, and a great cast. I agree. Uh, so yeah, it's going to be fun. What we will do is similar to what we've done for other shows is we, now we've covered the, the premiere, the pilot, and then we'll be, we'll, we'll cover two episodes at a time. So our next recap will be in three weeks. So uh, that's how we will do it. Uh, but let us know what y'all think of the pilot. Uh, and uh, if you are intrigued by it, we'd love to hear your thoughts. And uh, thanks so much to both of you for uh, covering this pilot. And me too. How can people follow you? You can find any and all episodes of the pilot podcast where we review pilot episodes, hopefully one day on Hallmark, but until then (laughs) across most cable and streaming at thepilotpodcast.com and on all podcasting platforms. And you can follow us at the pilot pod on TikTok, Instagram, and Twitter. And Michelle, what about you? I'm on Twitter at Michelle R. Benson. Great. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews, all of our social media iTunes, YouTube, and on Round Tomatoes. Check that out. Also, uh, make sure you're following the podcast, the Hallmarkies Pod and Hallmarkies Podcast, all of our social media. We are back on Facebook, so this is very exciting. I did <laughs> agree. Hey. So, you got back into your page? Yeah, we did. Yes. Oh, uh, nice. Our I didn't think I, I didn't think we ever would. I really didn't because I had no luck in getting through to them at all. But uh, one of our co-hosts, Megan, her cousin works at Facebook. And so she saved the day. And uh, so wow. it, if you have, if you get disabled out of Facebook, try to find somebody who, <laughs> who works there because otherwise it's, <laughs> it's rough. Uh, but anyway, we're back on Facebook. So people follow us there and all their social medias. And if you are listening on iTunes, please leave your ratings and reviews. That really helps us a lot. And, and also check out the pilot podcast and give their ratings and reviews too. That really helps a podcast out a lot. Uh, if you put the five-star reviews, uh, and if you are listening on YouTube, please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. We appreciate that so much. We also have our patron group, which we'll be talking about this show probably a lot in the patron group. So it's a great time to join uh, the Patreon, get lots of great benefits. And then we also have the merch store, which has tons of fun designs. So take a look at that. And uh, thanks so much, ladies. And uh, we'll talk to you all later. And don't forget to give us your suggestions for podcast name for this series <laughs> in the in the comments. So we'll talk to you all later. Bye, everyone.